In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Yamaha YC series of keyboards to control IK Multimedia's B3X, including one-to-one -one control with the draw bars. Let's check it out. Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight Studio, and in this video, we're going to detail how to use the YC series of keyboards as a controller for IK Multimedia's B3X. Now, I've had a bunch of requests for this, and I think it's simply because having real-time control over the draw bars when this is acting just as a MIDI controller is pretty valuable, especially when you're tracking inside your own DAW. Now, considering the PC and the iOS iPad versions are identical, the process is the same for both. So once you learn how to do it on PC, same for iOS and vice versa. And if you take advantage of some of the YC's really powerful master keyboard control, zones, which there can be up to four of them, you can have some pretty complex layering going on. So whether you're using it to program inside your own DAW or you're using the iOS iPad version for a sound module with a ton of layering capabilities live, both are pretty valuable. So let's dive in and find out how to assign the controls, how to get the MIDI CC information, and then how to get it to apply to all the onboard controls of the YC. Let's check it out. So first off, I've had my copy of B3X for years. I had to buy it just like everybody else did, so this isn't a sponsored video, and I have no investment in IK Multimedia. So we're here inside of our project in our DAW. We're working in Cubase, and we're working on an Americana-style song. And the whole thing sounds like this. Hey, last summer, just about So we're going to use B3X to add some organ parts to this song. It's really been the go-to organ soft synth for as long as I can remember. Now, we could just record the output of the YC88. It's got amazing onboard sounds as well, but we're using our YC purely as a controller in this example, so it's great to have a killer emulation of it in the DAW. And we want to be able to record and use these parameters, especially the draw bars, in real time. So until Yamaha actually makes a fully believable version of the YC88 in software available to us, like they've done with the Montage M series, we're using B3X. All right, so ideally we'd want to be able to control our Hammond B3X from our YC as close to kind of one-to-one -one control as we can get, meaning the parameters and the draw bars and everything control our soft synth. Um, and obviously this is gonna be different for every controller. Some are gonna control better than others. Uh, the YC actually makes the process of MIDI controller information discovery pretty easy to do and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if you touch any of the controllers on the YC, any of the rotary controllers, if you look really carefully here in the LCD, you'll notice they actually generate MIDI control information right here on the LCD display. This one, for example, this is the keys B volume control. It generates MIDI CC 27. The tone knob itself, this generates 28. The first effects depth control is 31. The rate, 68 and so forth. All of these for each engine, A and V, have their own independent MIDI control assignments and numbers that they generate. So for example, keys A volume, this generates 18. Keys A tone generates 19 and so forth. However, it's only the rotary controllers that generate that MIDI information, but the buttons themselves do not. So octave, no, splits nope keys a and b you know the rocker switches don't it's only the rotary controls but because most of the buttons don't produce midi controller information we're going to have to control most of these features with rotary dials like vibrato and chorus settings or the percussion settings because these don't generate midi information and the other curious thing about the yc is that while all of the rotary controllers generate and display its midi controller info the draw bars do not. Now what's interesting is the draw bars actually do generate MIDI information. They generate MIDI controller information. It just is the one controller 
that generates it that doesn't have it displayed in the LCD. But thankfully that information is obtainable, it's buried in the manual, and you can see here on the screen as we pull that up, that they all generate information. So first things first, now that we know the MIDI continuous controller information, let's dive into B3X and reassign all the upper drawbars first. So here in our B3X soft synth, if we come over here to the settings tab, we have a variety of different controls that we can manipulate here. We can set our pitch, our MIDI channels, and some other information, but the area we're most interested in is the MIDI controllers area. This shows all of the parameters in B3X that can be controlled by using MIDI continuous controller information. So our Leslie speed, that's continuous controller one, Leslie break 93, our master volume is continuous controller seven and so forth. And they have a couple different configuration options. They can be inverted and they can also latch. So the first things first, let's get the upper draw bars set up first. And our upper draw bar, that's our 16 foot, that starts on 102. So let's assign that one. Thankfully, they're incremental. So upper draw bar number two, that's 103, and so forth. So we'll type the new MIDI CC information into each one of the upper draw bar locations here. And our last draw bar here, this is gonna be our one foot. This last draw bar MIDI controller info is 110. So now that we have all the upper draw bars reconfigured, let's go back to the interface itself and make some changes. And you'll notice that it's still not changing. And the reason why is because we have the lower draw bar setting selected. The YC can jump back and forth between upper and lower draw bars. And when we do, the draw bars generate different MIDI information. So these aren't just generic controllers. They really are hardwired to their upper and lower positions. If we jump back to the upper position, there's our control over each one of these now. So now they all have real-time control and we can adjust them as we play and perform. That MIDI information is gonna be stored in the performance, obviously, since the, right now we're just controlling MIDI info. We're not controlling any audio from the YC. So let's do the same thing. We'll jump back over to the lower draw bar settings, and then we'll change those numbers as well. Back in the MIDI controllers tab, we see all of our lower draw bar assignments, and the first lower draw bar starts at MIDI CC number 111. And like before, thankfully, these are all incremental, so we'll speed through these. And our last lower draw bar position here is going to be at 119. So let's jump back to our interface here. Make sure that we're still on the lower organ selection for the draw bars. And as we move these up and down, we can see there's all of our lower draw bar controls responding as well. So even though the individual buttons on the YC series of keyboards don't generate MIDI CC info, jumping back and forth between the upper and lower draw bar banks does. So we still have the same amount of control and they're dedicated to each one of the banks with their own individual colors. So remember how we had discovered that every single rotary control on the YC generates MIDI data, but the buttons themselves do not? There's one exception. The two buttons over here under the rotary speaker area do generate MIDI continuous controller information number 85, but they don't generate individual numbers. For example, this is 85 and that's also 85. The stop or break button generates a MIDI CC of 85 at a value of 64. The slow fast button generates a CC of 85 at either zero for the slow press or 127 for the fast press. If you assign both the Leslie speed and the Leslie break to MIDI CC 85, and then you put latch on the Leslie break, both buttons will work, but you'll only be able to break from the slow setting. If you go from slow to fast and then you hit break, you have to hit the fast button twice to cycle back around to send the right MIDI CC info that B3X expects to see to break. So in the end, I found it was just easier to use the slow fast button to control the Leslie speed and then just use another rotary controller to control the break. Or you could assign just the break to 85 and then use the mod lever to control the Leslie speed. It's totally up to you and how you want to set up your controller. So now that we have control over the draw bars and we have control over the Leslie speed, let's get control over the master volume and the amplifier gain. Let's make the YC's master volume knob and the B3X master volume the same. 
That's this guy. It's generating 13. Let's change that to 13. And the YC pre-drive control generates MIDI CC info 14. So let's change the Leslie amplifier gain to MIDI CC 14. So now when we come back to our interface here, this is going to be controlling our overall volume of the organ. And then this is going to be controlling our amplifier gain. This way we have access to the distortion or the pre-gain separate from the volume. So those are nice because they're pretty similar to one-to-one -to -one controls on the YC surface. We have our volume for the organ and we have the pre-drive. Let's jump back over to the MIDI implementation chart and take a look at some of the other parameters that the YC can generate MIDI CC info for. And as you can see, there's a ton of them. Now that doesn't mean that B3X can receive all of them, but it can receive things like control for the reverbs. There's a lot to choose from here, but the YC can generate reverb depth control from both the Keys A and B engines or the organ engine, or it can do the overall reverb control. So you get the idea here. There's lots of stuff to control, and I'd really like to be able to use the rotary control in the reverb section of the YC to control the overall reverb send. And we can see that it's sending CC info 83. B3X doesn't include receiving any depth control information on its reverbs, but if we scroll down here, we can see that we can turn them on or off. If we assign the main reverb on to accept MIDI CC83, and then we jump back over here and we look at the post effects, we can see we'll be controlling the main reverb in our digital rack. And if we want, and we jump over to the stop box section, we have a spring reverb here as well. If we assign both of the reverbs to the same MIDI CC info, we can turn both reverbs on and off by using the same rotary dial here in our reverb section. Anything past the halfway point is basically on and anything lower than the halfway point is basically off. Or we could just leave this knob assigned to the main reverb and assign another rotary control to the spring reverb. The next most important controls for a live performance or programming into our DAW are gonna be control over the vibrato settings and the percussion settings, but we can't use the individual buttons. They don't generate MIDI CC info, so we need some rotary dials instead. So for example, in the effects section here, right next to speaker and amp, one advantage of using these as controllers is that they don't change from A to B. The depth knob is sending 94, the rate knob is sending 79. If we change over to B, the same thing is true here. There's still 94 and 79, which means we can kind of depend on that. So I could use this 94, I could actually use that to select the vibrato type. So we'll switch that number to 94 and then we'll come back over here and we'll look at our organ selection. And then we look here at the vibrato type as we sweep this around, we can actually use that knob to sweep through the vibrato and chorus types. All right, that works pretty well. We've got control over the chorus and vibrato. We've got control over the draw bars. We've got control over the Leslie speed. We've got control over the reverb, and it's still pretty one-to-one -one from the interface, but we still need control over the percussion settings to make it viable for a live performance, or at least the percussion on and off settings. If we chose the rate knob over here, this is generating CC79. Let's change percussion on and off to 79. And now when we're moving this, you can hear the percussion being engaged and disengaged. So you can see that you can set this up to really the way that makes the most sense to you and have really almost complete control over it. You just don't have one-to-one -one control in the sense that the buttons, for example, that say vibrato and chorus on or off are going to respond because the buttons themselves don't generate MIDI info. But using the rotary dials to accomplish the same thing puts you in the ballpark. So obviously you could use all of these controls, not just on B3X, but on just about any soft synth, but it gives you an idea of what's possible, especially with the layered controls that are available on the YC. And if you use a lot of the YC's master control features, you can break those controls up into four complete zones for even more control. That's a bit longer video with a whole lot more detail, but you get the idea. You can use it in a lot of surprising ways. And even with the limitation of the rotor speeds and the buttons themselves not always producing metadata, you have a lot 
of control just using the rotary dials themselves and then the onboard draw bars, both upper and lower. Hey, if you learned something more, if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscription and notification bells. It really does help keep the channel going and it helps me make more videos like this. Stay safe, be creative, add something creative to the world that could really use it. Take care. We'll catch you guys in the next video.